so this is the second lecture on physical layer the first lecture was how to send a bit the second lecture is how the bits get there so we were too much concentrated mostly on the sender side now we are going to concentrate on the medium side and the medium here is the wireless so we will talk about terms such as reflection, diffraction, scattering, fading, shadowing, multipath, personal zones, and so on and so forth. Now here I think most of this, if you were to take a course on wireless communication, they will spend a whole semester on these things. But we are networking course, not the communication course, and therefore we want to spend the most of the semester on the rest of the layers. So we are still trying to cover up so that we know these things. You know, because if you don't know these things, then you won't be able to design the right protocols. So the radio channel has these issues. First of all, the loss depends upon the distance and frequency. So what frequency you choose? Somebody had asked the question, what is the effect of frequency on things? And there is a big effect. So we'll talk about that. And of course the distance. And not only the distance, everything that is in between along the path. Noise, what else is happening around you? Shadowing. So shadowing we will define that shadowing to whatever is in, in between frequency dispersion motion basically doppler spread interference another name for noise but the interference is more basically between people so noise could be like in this room when i'm talking the noise could be coming from these appliances and light and electricity but the interference would be if you start talking then you know two signals they will also interfere right Multipath, and, and we saw in the previous slide, a previous module about something coming back from the mountains. So you have the signals is coming not from a state from one place, it is coming through the wall, coming reflected through the ceiling, and so on. So you get multiple paths, echoes. And inter-symbol interference, ISI. Basically, when I send you five bits, and the next five bits, they might collide. I mean, they might become bigger, actually, as we will see that the five bits they start this is small here by the time they reach to you they are this big and and the other five bits also they started just next to each other but they by the time they cut to you they are bigger and they interfere with each other so even if nobody else is speaking my signal will interfere with itself okay so all of these i haven't defined yet and so i will define um First of all, antenna. So the antenna, previously we used to be able to see the antenna on everything. So there was an antenna on the car, there was antenna on the computer, and there used to be. Nowadays, antennas are almost all hidden. And so there are antennas on my computer, but you cannot see them. And um, only if I put a big um, router here, wireless router, then there are some antennas you can see. And so what the antenna does is, it converts from electrical to electromagnetic waves. Electrical itself is electromagnetic, but um, so whatever comes through the wire, it just gets out into the air, and that's what antenna job is. And the receiver does the opposite. So on the transmitter side, the antenna sends it out into the air, and the receiver side, it receives it and converts into electrical energy, so you can process it. And the same antenna is used for transmission and reception. So if you have one antenna, the same thing is doing both jobs. So receiving and transmitting, you don't need two. And generally they are omnidirectional. And that means that they are sending power in all 360 degrees in all directions. And well, actually 360 degrees doesn't really tell you, but it's not only horizontal, vertical, you know, whole sphere, the energy is going up and down everywhere. That is omnidirectional. Directional antenna will transmit most of the energy in one direction. So, here is the directional antenna and you can design it so that it will, most of the energy will go in this direction. Whereas you can design it so that the direction energy goes into all the direction. Or, you know, or if you were to measure the energy, you will find that it is almost in all directions same thing. Okay. So, this is omnidirectional and this is directional. And... Um, and directional antenna, basically most power goes in the desired direction because if I am talking to you, I really don't want the energy to go up or sideways or backwards. That will be waste of the energy. So sometimes we use directional antenna. Isotropic means omnidirectional. Basically isotropic means equal. 
in all directions and then if it is um, and then basically de depending upon how you design the antenna you might get more power than the isotropic antenna okay so if you design the antenna then as you can see here the power here is much more than what an isotropic antenna will give you and so the ratio of the two is called the gain <coughs> antenna gain so when you buy an antenna if you go on amazon and you buy an antenna it will say 3 db antenna 7 db antenna 5 db 9 db antenna basically what that means it, it will give you 9 db more power than an isotropic antenna okay so the power received is equal to power transmitted times the gain of the transmitting antenna times the gain of the receiving antenna times lambda upon 4 pi d whole squared lambda is the wavelength and d is the distance so if you have a sphere of, of um, radius d if you have a sphere of radius d it has an area of 4 pi d square so basically this is the formula by which you can calculate the pr so all you need is the transmitting antenna and the receiving antenna either one could have a high gain so if if the transmitting antenna has a high gain you get more power if the receiving antenna has a high gain you can receive more power all right and all these powers are not in dbs though right this is a multiplication so here is the kind of confusion when you have to put the power here you really have to take a log if you want to do it in db and then that will say that db power transmitted in db plus the antenna gain which could be 3 db 5 db whatever plus the antenna gain plus you know so on and so forth so everything will become plus right now it is all multiplicative yeah so is this is this gain mean for what an antenna, an antenna with like a 9 db gain is that inherently not omni, omnidirectional or well um what it could do is, yeah, right, right. It doesn't have to be omnidirectional. Basically, it could not transmit in the vertical direction and put in horizontally equal all the dimension, all the direction. So it could be 360 degrees, but not vertical. Okay. Because if it's in all directions equally, it's isotropic. Yeah, right, right. Then it's isotropic. So are those power ratings for a specific direction of the antenna? Or it's oh, basically this is between the receiver and the transmitter, right? PR and PT. So every place it will be different. If I measure it here, it will be different than over there, than over there. Okay. Right? And if there are 15 computers here, it will be different. Now question, then we move on to other effects. So basically when somebody transmits a signal, it goes <coughs> in many ways. First of all, it can get reflected. Right, if there is a building or a wall, signal will get reflected and there will be a phase shift. Okay, if there is a lamp post which is very thin, it can get scattered. Okay, and if there is an edge, it can get diffracted. Not that it makes any difference to us in our analysis, but we need to know these terms reflection, scattering, diffraction. Here it got reflected, then got reflected here again. And so when you are, if you are here, you will get signals from several places by reflection, by diffraction, by scattering. All right. And all of them will have different phases, different magnitude. Yeah, right. So there is no one ray to one ray here. A scattering could be, you know, scattering at the word says that it is scattered all over, right? If I throw something at you, it is scattered. Right. As opposed to reflection, etc. more directional, right? A scattering of course goes okay for reflection etc you can actually calculate um, the angles you know if you didn't did physics in high school you probably learned about how the light reflected and how you calculate the angle and so on and so forth so those formulas still apply we won't do any of that i just want you to know the three terms that's all there are different terms that people use a scattering is generally when you meet a very thin object and um, and then um, the diffraction happens when there is an edge and reflection happens when there is a solid thing somewhere okay all right so reflection surface is large relative to the wavelength so when we say thin or thick 
it has related to the wavelength. So the related to the wavelength of the signal, it is reflected and may have a phase shift, may cancel out original or increase it. So because of the phase shift, it could just cancel out the original signal. So you may get a zero because the signal reflected in that one, right? I could in, in, in increase it. Diffraction, if the edge is large related to lambda and uh, may receive signal even if though no line of sight. So if even if you're not in the line of sight, you can get the signal. So suppose you are here and the car is here, you can't see it, but you get in it by diffraction. And scattering, when the obstacle size is out of the wavelength, lamp post, etc. If LOS, line of sight, diffracted and scattered signals are not significant, reflected signals may be. So let's go back. So if you are right here, let's say you are right here, line of sight. Okay. Then these things would be small compared to what you get directly. And if no line of sight, diffraction and scattering are the primary means of reception. Everything makes sense so far?